Hello, and welcome to Commissioner's Corner. I'm Commissioner Charlotte Garrido. Today we're going to talk about a very, very serious crisis in Kitsap County, and that is the terms of housing and homelessness for the residents of Kitsap County. In fact, we have an affordable housing and homelessness crisis, and while we know that air, food, water, and shelter are basic human needs, in Kitsap County, that for every 100 extremely low-income individuals or families that seek housing, there are only 12 available units. Mm -hmm. For every 100 families seeking housing, there are only 12 available affordable units. That's really sobering information. I can't imagine what it's like to live without a permanent place to sleep every night, at the very least. So today, I have some guests, and we're going to discuss um, this crisis. What is affordable? What are the so-called homeless? What is life like when one has no permanent shelter? We're also going to take a look at Kitsap's support system and at a housing homeless plan and how we can be more active in implementing that plan. So to start with a little background information, I'd like to introduce a couple of people who are very, very experienced at the practical level and also are very, quite data-driven in the work that they do. I'd like to welcome Kirsten Jewell, who is the coordinator of Kitsap County's Housing and Homeless Program. And um, Monica Bernard is the manager of the Housing Solutions Center. Would you like to tell us just a little more about what we know about those who struggle with having a place to live? Absolutely. Sure. Um, so one thing to think about is that people experiencing homelessness are our friends and our neighbors, mm -hmm. their families, um, their singles, their couples. It really crosses all different types of families and, and all different types of situations. On a practical level, when we talk about homelessness, we categorize it into three different ways. We have people who are living outside, who are unsheltered, who are literally homeless. Um, we have folks who are staying in emergency shelters and transitional housing, and they would be homeless if not for having that housing. And then we have a significant number of people who are living with family and friends, sometimes called couch surfing. Monica? Yeah. Well. Thankfully, um, Kitsap County has a coordinated entry system to work with these individuals. I mean, as you mentioned, there's not enough resources to go around. But we do have a system called the Housing Solutions Center where anyone who's homeless or about to become homeless, they can come to one place and get access to all the resources. So we manage the community waiting list for all the emergency shelters in the community. We help people find landlords. Um, we work with over 100 different landlords in our area. Um, we, may, we help them access deposit and rent um, assistance and then in some cases where it's appropriate we try to help them get access to mental health or substance abuse supports so um, yeah so the housing solution center has definitely been a key part of uh, the success in terms of dealing with some of the housing crisis in this area but I would agree that the housing crisis has gotten worse um, you know the housing solution center last year served over 3,200 um, individuals and families. Um, those are unduplicated numbers. Those are individual individuals and families. Um, 3,200. That's right. Wow. That's right. And um, sadly, of that number, 941 um, individuals or families were what Kirsten referred to as literally homeless. So they were living in tents. They were living in cars, in shelters. Um, in the campments in the woods, um, any place that they could find, but in generally it's not a place that's meant for people to live. So that's, that's the challenge facing our community. 941 households just last year um, are definitely uh, facing the crisis of homelessness. So who are some of the people who have no <coughs> homes and, and what are some of the, what brings them to that situation? Yeah, so there are so many different causes of homelessness. I mean, when we sit and meet with people every single day, we see that every single person has a unique story. But what we see are some commonalities as well. And so um, it could be domestic violence. That's a, that's a common cause of homelessness. It might be um, somebody losing a job. 
uh, it's often a family crisis, a family breakup type of situation. Um, I think one of the one of the biggest contributors, though, is really people don't have enough income in general to pay for private market housing, and there's a lack of affordable housing, as you mentioned. So, so those two things working together, combined with mental illness, mm -hmm. substance abuse, domestic yeah. violence, um, economic issues, they all com combine to contribute to the homelessness situation. Well, I can certainly see that economic connection mm -hmm. um, and other connections. But right. Can you tell me just a little bit more about where that, how far that income divide is from where housing, if it were available? Um, sure. Would yeah, I can Go talk ahead. a little about affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, so we uh, consider, in fact, the federal government and the state government, we all consider that housing is affordable when it costs no more than 30 percent of mm -hmm. a household's income. Um, and when you're paying more than 30 percent of your income, it's called being cost burdened. When you're paying more than 50% of your income, it's severely cost burdened. And unfortunately, um, we have a number, a, a large number of households in our county, um, almost 13,000, who are experiencing that cost burden or severe cost burden. And when you have the, the lower your income and the higher that percentage is, the more difficult it is just to make ends meet and to be able to afford that rent and afford those utilities and afford, um, you know, just to put food on the table. So the average, um, as a as a, a, a reference point, the average um, renter wage in Kitsap is about eleven dollars and twenty six cents, and um, the rent that you can afford at that is about five hundred eighty six dollars. But the average rents in Kitsap have been dramatically increasing. Our vacancy rate is one of the lowest mm -hmm. in the state at less than 3%. And the costs are skyrocketing. And the costs are skyrocketing. They're more than $1,000 a month for the mm -hmm. average apartment, and they've increased about 12% over the last year. So you can see if you're earning this average amount of rent, rent or income and the cost of housing is this high, there's just a huge gap. There is no magic at all, is and there? And there is no magic. Um, and that, that's really where the, the big gap lay, lies. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty sobering information. Mm -hmm. So let's just take a look at, or let's have somebody tell us about the experience of homelessness. Mm -hmm. Joe Summers is um, pretty active in the community of the South Kitsap Community Alliance, as well as the Kitsap Rescue Mission. And um, you have been a strong advocate for housing and, and preparing homes for those who need a, a shelter. Why don't you tell us about how you got there and uh, what, you, what you know? Well, I've been with the uh, Kitsap Rescue Mission for about four years now. Um, been on their board for quite a while. Uh, have been drawn to the homeless for I don't know how long as an adult. It's just th these vulnerable people, that's, that's the way I try and look at them to get people to understand that they're extremely vulnerable. The things that have happened to them, a lot of it is beyond their control. But I've been working with them now off and on pretty much steady for over four years um, to the point that I was even, I received a calling, a go out and find out what it's like. So in January and February of 2015, I put my backpack on and went and lived out in the woods with them for quite a while, for over a month, um, and seen what they go through. Now, we're talking mostly chronic homeless, those who have been out there for a long time, um, and they could have got there for any number of reasons. It's, it's not just a choice anymore where they're at. Um, something happened in their life, like you spoke, some, some crisis happened and now they're homeless. Once they get out there, then they fall into more of the issues that the, the, the public talks about. Well, they're addicted to this or they're addicted to that. And yes, they are. Um, they are addicted to one thing or another, or they may have a mental illness. Mm -hmm. But my question to be to anyone to try and understand it is, what would it take for you to sleep in the open on a concrete sidewalk every night of your life? I Where cannot would you be? imagine. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they all have one major thing in common that I didn't have with them when I went out. When I went out there, I knew why I was going out there and that I was going to go home when I was done and that I also mm -hmm. had the knowledge and the love of Christ in mm -hmm. me, which a lot of them don't. But they have one major deficit that we don't understand because we've never been there. They have no hope. Oh. There's no hope of tomorrow, no hope of a, of a bed to sleep in tonight, no hope that they can turn off the light and you know, get comfortable and go to sleep and be secure. They have no hope. Um, and they have no dignity. 
we took that away from them. We, society, took their dignity away. How many people can honestly say that they would look someone in the eyes when they're panhandling and, and have a respect for them? Not very many can. And they know that. They've learned to live with that. So our homeless that are out there today in Kitsap County and throughout the world, because this is a worldwide crisis, um, have a very unique problem that we that aren't homeless can't understand. What we can't understand is why can't they change? Why can't they just move out of this? It's, they're just a choice away. I hear it all the time. Um, but they're not. Kirsten knows, Monica knows, Monica knows real well. She sees all these people all the time. Housing Solutions is our best, best model that any county could ever take on would be that one point entry data, mm -hmm. that one place they can go to get help. But for it to work well, we need to have those places where we can give people a place to be mm -hmm. safe mm -hmm. and, and sheltered. Yeah. So this is a logical place for us, first of all, to hear from one more person just briefly about her experience with living um, without a home. And then I would like to talk to, about Kitsap's support system and talk about some of the diverse partners that work on homelessness issues across Kitsap County. Uh, so let's take a quick break so that we can um, hear from Desiree and get some other people at the table. Now we're at the Kitsap Rescue Mission with Desiree. And Desiree is going to tell us a little bit about, Desiree, would you tell us a little bit about what it's like to have no permanent shelter? It's really hard. We, the people on the streets, including me, I mean, we, go to, we don't know where we're going to sleep at night. We don't know where, if we're going to get woken up by the cops and told to move because inside city limits, it's illegal. You can't sleep outside at night. It's illegal. So and they're constantly moving you around, hassling you. They tell you to go outside the city limits. Sheriffs hassle you there. It's if we could have a place to sleep every night and wake up every morning and have a place to have our mail sent, a lot of us probably wouldn't be on the street right now. So how long can you successfully have a, a block of sleep? Um, now that I'm actually in a tent, I sleep all night. But when I was on the streets, like a lot of the guys are down here, an hour or two and then you're either woken up or you just wake up because it hurts to sleep on the concrete after a while. Well, thank you for talking with us and thank you so much for the volunteerism that you give four days a week to the rescue mission. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Welcome back. We're going to have Monica continue with us for a little while. We have Daryl Thomas from Kit Coffee Oasis and Denise Fry from the YWCA. We wanted to talk again about the diverse partners in the community and our continuum of care is made up of more than 50 organizations in this community all talking about homelessness in Kitsap County and how to combat it and resolve that problem. Denise, you wanted to talk a little bit about Housing mm -hmm. First. Would mm -hmm. you like to do that now? Sure, First. <laughs> um, housing First is the concept that instead of waiting for someone to become free of drug and alcohol addiction, uh, become uh, uh, free of domestic violence, become free uh, of all of the challenges that they have before they are given housing, to actually give them Housing First. Um, I don't know about you, but it would be very difficult for me to address those challenges with, without having a safe place to sure. live. A safe place to live and some support services right yes. there. Yes, and that's what's different, I think, about the Housing First concept, is we get them into housing, but we make sure that they're provided all of the support system mm -hmm. that they need while they're in that housing, so that hopefully, ultimately, they can be completely independent uh, of that support and live fabulous mm -hmm. lives. Yes, yeah. wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Daryl, what does Coffee Oasis do? So Coffee Oasis is committed to changing the world for homeless youth. Um, so what we do is we focus on a lot of educational programs, just seeing that um, a lot of homeless population don't have high school education. Uh, we also commit to doing life skills classes and um, helping people with criminal backgrounds gain employment. Uh, we also do a lot of case management services and partnering with uh, many uh, organizations in the community uh, to provide housing for youth ages 13 to 25 and we also have a teen shelter in Kitsap County which is ages 16 to 20. I'm really really impressed with the continuum that 
that Coffee Oasis offers our young people. Mm -hmm. um, gives them a support network, a sense of security, and also teaches them skills so that they have those to go forward um, and face the workplace as well. Yes, definitely. And, you know, we see in a lot of the homeless population there can be a lot of adverse childhood experiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking to address those experiences and hopefully help them through the healing process and uh, move them forward. So. Both wonderful ideas, and there are so many more organizations out in Kitsap County who are addressing this issue in different ways. So thank you both for being here. Thank you. Um, Monica probably works with both of you uh, mm -hmm. yes. frequently. Yes. <laughs> Monica, how does one access the services of Housing Solutions Center? Well, the Housing Solutions Center, we have locations across the county. So um, our main center is in Bremerton at 1201 Park Avenue at um, Kitsap Community Resources Family Services Center. Um, we have a part-time person that works in South Kitsap. We have an individual up at North Kitsap Fish Line um, that can help in the north end. And we newly opened a site at Helpline House. So while people can access all the services at any one of these locations, we wanted to have multiple locations because we're such a large, geographically mm -hmm. diverse county. And we also partner with Coffee Oasis because many of the young people don't want to go to traditional mm -hmm. um, social service agencies. So um, they provide the mm -hmm. Housing Solutions Center for the youth. Great. Thank you, all three. Well, we're going to take another break because we're going to bring um, Kirsten back to talk with us. And we're going to take a quick visit to Coffee Oasis to, mm -hmm. to get a, si a look inside. Um, then we're going to talk about the Housing Homeless Plan. So let's take that break and, and come back and talk about the Housing Homeless Plan. We're here at Coffee Oasis in Bremerton, and Daryl is going to tell us a little bit about what goes on here. Daryl? Yeah, so right now you have a view of our coffee shop. Our coffee shops, they support our youth programs that work with homeless and at-risk youth, uh, youth who are at risk of homelessness. And so that's what you're seeing here. So uh, you can always learn more about us at thecoffeeoasis.com. Uh, you'll begin to see some footage of our teen shelter, our teen centers, and also a little bit about our job training programs that we do for youth who may be struggling in life and so yeah check it out why don't you tell us about this job training we're seeing right here right over the coffee beans mm -hmm. yeah so this job training we we train a lot of youth in doing uh, barista work and actually kitchen work and learning more about coffee and here uh, is two of our employees who are actually doing a training and they are doing a coffee tasting we actually get our coffee from uh, different countries in which it when we buy that we support their communities because they invest back into their communities and so um, they are helping us invest in our community through coffee. So now we're ready to talk about heading home Kitsap County's housing the homeless plan. This is a plan that has goals, strategies and suggested actions and it's time for us to talk about moving those actions into, re in, into high gear. And in, to do that, we're going to ha have a summit in June of 2016. And that means we're going to bring a lot of these organizations, all that we can, uh, together to talk about their priorities, the work that they're doing, and how we can work together to be the most strategic about getting the most amount of decent housing in Kitsap County for those who most need it. So, Kirsten, did you want to start out with some of the priorities for action? Sure. So. Our homeless housing plan overall has the goal of working together as a community to make homelessness rare, brief, and one time, and making sure that our response system is as efficient as possible. And so the plan is really divided into these five different goal areas, making homelessness rare, making it brief, making it one time, uh, making sure that our response system is efficient as possible, and then expanding community engagement. Within the just plan, to, to say yes. that was five goals that she just five made. goals. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> thank you. Um, and each within each of those goals, as Commissioner Greedo mentioned, there's a lot of different strategies and action steps, um, almost 60 altogether. And in order to be able to move forward with implementation, we can't do all of them at once. Mm -hmm. So a group of stakeholders has gotten together and really figured out kind of groups of 
these action items that we should work on first. And the three main priority areas that have been identified as the first areas for implementation are to preserve and create more units of affordable housing, to prioritize serving people who are experiencing unsheltered or chronic homelessness, mm -hmm. and then to expand the funding opportunities for these programs because all of these programs cost a significant amount of money. So just a couple of things that we're going to work on um, around uh, preserving and creating affordable housing units. Um, Monica is going to talk a little bit about our, the la landlord liaison program and how we need to partner with local landlords. Right. So the Housing Solutions Center today partners with over a hundred different landlords. Um, and if it weren't for these landlords, the housing crisis would be far worse. I mean, we truly see them as our partner in this community in solving this problem uh, because they are the front lines. But unfortunately, with a vacancy rate right around 3%, there's not enough mm -hmm. units to go around. So, you know, one of our big needs is for more landlords to get engaged, reach out to the Housing Solutions Center, let us know um, when you have units available. Um, a lot of these landlords are very willing to work with some folks who might have some challenging barriers, for example, eviction history, or maybe some credit trouble in their past, or maybe they don't have quite enough income. Um, and so these landlords have been working with the Housing Solutions Center. Sometimes we'll offer an extra deposit to provide some insurance and incentive for the landlord for taking that risk. Um, wow. But the landlord piece is critical mm -hmm. to the solution. And in addition to that, we need to promote production of more units of affordable housing. So look at some um, zoning and land use mm -hmm. um, uh, incentives and regulations that help us make sure that the number of affordable housing units is keeping up with, with the need. If I, as a planner, could insert, we really need to look at the styles of housing that we design mm -hmm. and make sure that modest is, is included. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. Um, the second area that we're prioritizing is uh, serving people who are unsheltered or experiencing chronic homelessness. Um, as Denise talked about earlier, we have a great need for more housing first units, especially for singles. Um, we have a few for families and um, women, but we don't really have any for singles. Um, we also need to look at um, some respite beds for people who are very medically fragile and getting discharged into homelessness and just really struggling with their health. Um, and then Joe is going to share a little bit about a new ordinance that will help us provide another living opportunity for people experiencing homelessness. In February 22nd of this year, the county commissioners approved a transitory accommodation ordinance for Kitsap County that is allowing for five different types of permits for transitory accommodations for our unsheltered homeless people. Um, everything from whether you're going to put an RV behind or beside your house um, to small transitory uh, membrane housing areas, 10 to 40, and then even an indoor shelter. Th there's a lot in this ordinance that was put together uh, making permits. I must uh, specify this, that you need to get the permit to do this, but making these permits available to start putting together some kind of a legal, safe, and good place for the homeless to live, which is the first step. Once again, they will all go through housing solutions. It's a must. It, it, that's, that's the big part of it. And they will all have to have case management. That's in the ordinance. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a legal place to live. We're not going to fight the fight that some of the other cities and counties are doing locally. This is going to be something entirely different. And, those are, and that's just a stepping stone, right? That's the first step so that then folks can move on to housing first units, if that's what's appropriate, or private market units, if we have landlords that will partner to, to mm -hmm. support those. So. Um, that's definitely a really important piece for people to have that And this is and uh, open to anybody that is faith-based or a nonprofit organization to apply for permits. Um, also, there's been a big movement in the county as of late. I think it's, it's really a God's timing that everything's coming together here um, because there's a lot of different churches that are getting together and saying, what can we do? How can we help? Um, and when it comes to the summit, this is where it's not only government, we have to understand this isn't just government, but uh, you know, the faith organizations that are out there, God tells you over 300 times we have these people to take care of in his word. Let's pay attention to what he says. We really need to all come together, the faith-based and the government. It is a big project. 
for everybody. Indeed it is. And, you know, we could talk about this for much, much longer than we have time today. I so appreciate you and all who have been here today to talk about it. Let's come together in June and talk about homelessness and alleviating homelessness in Kitsap County. We've heard some excellent things today about this is a basic human need. It's a human need that we need to, to help supply the answers for. Uh, we have some priority actions. We have some great potential partners out in the community, lots of them. So let's come together in June, talk further about it, and get busy. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for being here today. Um, I look forward to seeing you next time.